Well, good morning. Welcome once more to my shop. Today's topic, I'm going to deal with buffing on the lathe. And I do a lot of buffing on the lathe, but I also do some buffing on my drill press. For example, I may chuck something up like this. It's just got a bolt through that. And that's uh, one of the ways I buff different items that I've made. What kinds of things that you've turned on the lathe would you buff? Well, this is one of my early lacquered pieces. This is some walnut that I've got colored and sprayed with some lacquer. Generally, the harder the finish, the better the buffing will be. And lacquer is a great subject for buffing. It does a really, really nice job. This is a little bowl made of olive. And I've got this oiled. Now you can buff oil, but you need to make sure that it's really hard. Let it sit around for a few days because if you buff it too soon, well, it'll kind of gum up on you, but you'll, you'll discover that as you go along. And you may not want to buff an oil. I do sometimes just to see the effect. One of the best things you can buff is acrylic. And it's a little dusty, but I'll show you some of the different um, things I apply to acrylic to help that buffing process. One of the... Uh, items I get from craft supplies. It's a plastic polish and a little, little white bottle that you can use for pens. Works very well on anything that's acrylic. Well, it's October and we're in the middle of the World Series. Last night was game four. Cleveland has a good lead in the World Series and I hesitate to root for one or the other, but you know I'm, uh, I'm from that area in Cleveland, a little bit south of it in Akron. And uh, anyway, it's been a great series, some great baseball, and uh, made the best team win. I'm going to stop there. Here's a box of buffing supplies. Now, one thing, if you've seen my videos, please don't do what I do. Don't go out and buy a bunch of different uh, buffing supplies like this. I'm going to show you in a second. You may only need one or two. Sometimes I like to buff with a compound like this, and you simply charge your buffing wheel with a compound. And I'll go over some of these a little bit later. Sometimes I buff with a liquid, like a swirl remover. You can get that at Napa. Napa is a great place to get buffing supplies. Let's just take a look at some of these generally, and you can decide on your own what you need. Now, in a recent video, I did buffing wheels and I made this little buffing setup. I bought a couple really, really inexpensive buffing mops from Menards, and you can certainly put on here whatever you want. Some of them are cotton, some of them are wool, some of them are um, loose like this, not sewn together. This one is one that is sewn together, and it's rather tight. If you spin this on your lathe, uh, a little faster, you'll get a harder surface. But I'm not going to show you a whole lot with this. You can look at the video and I'll put up a link to that. What I've decided to do with this particular setup is dedicate this for waxes. One of the things that's important when you're buffing is try not to use two or three different compounds on the, on the same buffing wheel or buffing mop. Try to dedicate um, a different one for a different grid of compound. Like this one might be fine and medium or whatever you decide to put on there. It just works a lot better if you do that. If you've only got one, you can just clean it really, really well. And I'll show you what I do for cleaning when I get over on my bigger buffing wheel. Now, as we get into the end of October and the beginning of November, on November 12th, I'm going to be involved in a craft show, and I'm going to put up a flyer. And if you're from the Bighorn Basin, if you're from Warland, Thermopolis, anywhere around, you might check that out. It's a really, really good craft show, and there's uh, seven different people, seven different artists involved in that. But I'll let you uh, look at that handout, and if you want to check out the details. Um, let me show you a couple different ways you can buff on your lathe. 
or your drill press. This is a lamb's wool buffing wheel and there's just a, a little stud right there that you can put into your um, your drill chuck, your Jacobs chuck on, on either your drill press or your lathe. And that's a good method. It's nice and soft and, and I, I usually use a liquid on this. Okay, and you can put it on the piece, you can, you can put it on here, on the surface of this, and, and do your buffing. And that works pretty good. And again, I get a lot of these at Napa. Here are a couple different uh, buffing wheels, and these are actually a sponge. And I definitely use these with a liquid, like a swirl remover, um, like right here. And I'll give you some close-ups of these later on. This is uh, something I just got. It's Meguiar's Plastex, P-L-A-S-T-X, okay? And they use this for shining up headlights and taillights on automobiles. And I've been playing around with that on pens and bottle stoppers and acrylics. So that might be a, a good uh, material you can use to buff with. Now I use these sponge buffing wheels on my drill press mainly. I use them with water and a combination of swirl remover, mostly swirl remover, and, and the water. And I'll buff my lacquered pieces with that. And once you've got a bunch of uh, layers of lacquer, you can use water, all right? It makes a big mess. So you need to suit up with something and it'll splatter you. But it's a great way to, to do some buffing um, on different pieces. And again, swirl remover, water, keep it moist. And it does a great job with uh, buffing. I probably won't show you that in the video. Just you can kind of experiment as you go along. Here's a, here's a bigger lamb's wool wheel. Lots of great products out here. And this actually has a Morse taper on that. So I can put that on one of my lathes between centers. So if you have something like this, make sure that you do this between centers and do it safely or use a draw bar through your headstock to hold that in. Otherwise, you don't want that coming out and flying at you. So that's another good, good way to, to buff different items that you've made. Um, here's one. And then this also looks like, I'm not sure if it's lamb's wool or what it, what it is, but it's got a Velcro backing on it. And I've got some nice big uh, Velcro pads that I use for sanding, just generally sanding, that I'll put this on there, just Velcro it on, and I'll do some buffing with that. Okay, now, um, one of my main suppliers that I use is Stuart McDonald. And I talk about them all the time. I get my lacquer my nitrocellulose uh, lacquer from them. It's a guitar lacquer and you can get that from Stuart McDonald. And something else I get from them are some buffing compounds. So I've got uh, coarse, medium, and probably fine. Actually, this is a swirl remover. It says swirl remover, so that would be, that would be the fine. And you can get those, those are liquids. Shake them up and you put them on something like this, um, you probably would not want to use those on this kind of a buffing wheel, I'm, I'm thinking, all right? A lot of this you have to just experiment and play around with and see what works for you. And again, you don't need all this. Um, I've just collected these things over the years. And I do use most of these things at one point or another. Sometimes it's easier after I've taken a piece off the lathe and I've finished it, it's easier to take this onto the drill press, you know, rather than have this on the lathe spinning and buff, buff it there, which is okay. Um, I'll take that on my drill press and chuck something up, maybe like this, and, and then I'll do some more buffing. You know, let, let me show you a couple things I get from Stuart McDonald. Um, these are the, the buffing compounds I get. If I can get that someplace in the camera here. This is called Menzerna. 
Now the problem with this stuff, this is a buffing compound, and the problem is these are, I don't know, last time I checked, like $30 for one of these. So you may want to go in with a friend or two and buy these. You can cut them in half or something because they'll last you way past your lifetime. It's like they're really enormous, but they're very good, and I use them with my, my larger buffing wheels. Now in a second, the next stop is gonna take you over to my larger buffing setup where I've got two wheels like this. And this is actually uh, two buffing wheels put together to make a, a really, really large surface. I get these from Stuart McDonald, and I would use this on my drill press. Stuart McDonald, Stumac, lots and lots of really good finishing supplies from lacquer to buffing supplies to these kinds of things. Now, what is this? Well, it's an abrasive. Buffing is basically sanding with a very fine abrasive. It's not really sanding like we know it. And I think one of the big differences is that, you know, after I've sanded the, the bare wood on this to whatever, a thousand grit maybe, and I put my stain on there, my dye, then a, some lacquer, maybe 10 or 15 coats of lacquer, then I buff. Well, in that respect, it's not really sanding, you know, per se. I'm not using sandpaper, but I'm using the, an abrasive, and that's what this is all about. So hopefully what I'm using, whatever this is, this is the, the fine, and I usually use a medium. On, on this and you can almost get just the medium. I find I use that uh, from start to finish and that's probably all you really need. If you want to get a little bit crazy you can get the fine and the extra fine but save some money and just start out maybe with with one and I'd recommend the medium. But this is an abrasive. You, you charge up your wheel with this and I'll show you that in a second and you go from there. You just do a little bit of buffing and that is uh, basically sanding. So without getting into a whole lot of detail, if I'm going to approach a piece like this and I've sanded the wood to a thousand grit, 800, a thousand, whatever, then I've dyed it if I want to do that. You know, not all the time, but I like, I like to color my wood, color my world, right? And then I'll apply, in my experience, I'll apply lacquer and I'll spray it, 10, 15, sometimes 20 coats of lacquer, then I'll go and buff it. I start out by applying five coats of lacquer and I sand it with sandpaper. And then I'll put five more coats on and I'll sand it to finer grits, like maybe uh, 2,000, then five more coats and I'm sanding up to uh, three, four, 6,000 grit and eventually I'll use the little uh, the pen sanding uh, old pads that you get up to 12,000 grit, then I'll buff. It's a little bit laborious and tedious, but boy, you get a great finish after you've gone to 12,000 grit and then you go buff. And it really puts on a very nice, uh, nice surface. It's not just the sheen or how shiny it is, but it's also how smooth it becomes. And I really like that. So let's go over on one of my buffing wheels. <sighs> okay, I'm at my buffing setup here. And what I have is kind of a homemade deal where I've got a Balder motor. I picked this up at an auction years ago. And it's a really, really nice motor. It's been used, obviously, but it's got a switch right here. I don't know if you can see that, but it's actually got forward and reverse, which is really, really cool. And I've just kind of rigged this up with a couple pulleys, and you can't see this pulley definitely, but they're this size. And I've just got the same pulley in the front and the back. The motor spins at right at 1,050 RPM. It says it right on the motor, all right, which is a really good speed for buffing. So. Um, I don't need to buff any faster than that. So I've got my buffing wheels covered with garbage bags. And that really helps between buffing sessions to keep them clean. 
I actually have taken these off and put them in my wife's laundry into her washing machine so please don't say anything to her and uh, it makes a makes a racket in there anyway let me show you a couple ways that I do clean these one way is I just take a little hand saw and hold it against the buffing wheel like that now as I go along here this is going to make a ruckus a really loud noise so I'll probably do some voiceover clips in this so I'm going to turn this on and I'll just show you how I clean these now as you're charging the wheel with some buffing compound sometimes you can really build up uh, some oh just gunk on there that you want to clean off or maybe you want to start fresh and, and get more of a clean surface so I use my saw that's one method that you can use and, and just do that very carefully I think it's safe here's another thing that I do I just got a wire brush right there I'll do a little bit of that And you can certainly do this on your lathe. You don't need this kind of a setup. Um, so there's the wire brush. Now, charging the buffing wheels. So I've got a medium block of uh, that Stuart McDonald Menzerna compound. And like I said before, mostly I just use this. If I think I need to go finer, I'll go finer, but this works really well. I find that they're really, really fine grits don't cut as well and there's not much difference between going from this to a finer grit now if you're using the Beal buffing system I know there are compounds that go along with that system I don't use those I never have um, I actually do have some of the oh like the red I'm not sure what you call that it's a rouge or something I just don't use those all right I, I don't know if you go on the Stuart McDonald website, you'll see some really cool videos of these guys buffing a guitar, and it's wild. They just, they really go at it. And you need to be a little bit aggressive when you're, when you're buffing. So ordinarily what I do, this wheel, I use the medium, and this wheel over here, I use uh, the fine. And the other one I had in the previous clips over there, I've got another grit, an extra fine that I use for that wheel. So dedicate a compound per wheel. So I'm gonna just charge this up with my medium. Okay, now as I mentioned before, you can certainly go back and buff a piece that you've already finished in a you know previous lifetime so I'm gonna just take this walnut pot here I'm gonna do a little buffing on it nothing wrong with that it's it's got a nice finish on there but uh, let's just see now one more thing you need a really firm grip on this you don't want this flying across the room or smashing on the floor uh, this has got a nice big opening in there so I can get my my thumb in there if I've got a smaller hollow form, I want to make sure I get a finger inside that and get a really, really good grip on that. And you want to avoid sharp edges like this. And if you have them up like that, that's going to catch on there and pull it out of your hand. So you will discover these things. You want that trailing down like that. Now, as I'm going through the buffing process, I usually take 10 or 15 minutes to buff a piece, maybe a little bit longer. I'll just bring up one of my shop stools and sit down and and go through the grits. And usually I just do one grit and that's sufficient. And just charge up the wheel quite often. Every time you turn the piece a little bit, put some more buffing compound on it.
Now I'll leave a little bit of that in there in real time to give you an idea of, of how that works. And I've actually put uh, a, a kind of a nicer finish on that compared to up here. It could be that maybe previously I had some wax on there. I don't like to wax my pieces. I think it doesn't really add much and it's going to wear off eventually. And if you want a nice shiny surface like this, the wax is going to obscure it. So I, I typically don't wax my pieces. I might put a carnauba wax on a pen or a bottle stopper, something like that. Anyway, that's pretty much it. And again, um, as I'm buffing this and, and as I turn it, I'm taking that off the buffing wheel and then I turn it and put it back on. Take it off, turn it. If you, if you turn it when it's on the buffing wheel, it's a little bit harder to control. You got to be careful because it's hard to control. And you see, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this pretty aggressively. Do a little bit more on the neck of that. Well, there you have it. And I can't believe somebody hasn't bought this piece, but they haven't. Anyway, that's buffing. Let's see what else I can think of that I uh, haven't mentioned up to this point as far as buffing. And if you have any questions, you know, please send me a comment. I appreciate that. Now, when it comes to buffing, you have to think outside the box. And if you have a drill press, it's a great way to buff one of your turn pieces. This is a bottle stopper, an acrylic bottle stopper. And I, I usually buff these when I get done. I sand them to 12,000 grit and I'll use a swirl remover or something like that on there. So I'm gonna just do a little buffing on this. This is my drill press here. And I'm gonna charge that up with some um, Stuart McDonald buffing compound, that's the medium grit. One of the things I do as far as buffing is sometimes I'll buff something that's metal. And this is my dedicated metal buffing wheel right here. It makes a mess of the wheel, but it's very good. And if you're doing copper or something, maybe a, uh, a plumbing fitting on a tool handle, you can buff it right here. This wheel over here, I've got dedicated to smaller pieces that I, that I wax. I put a, put a little bit of wax on something like a bottle stopper. Now I'm going to turn this on. I'm not going to necessarily do any buffing. I picked this up for $10 at a yard sale and I couldn't resist it. So I put a couple buffing wheels on there, but it sounds like a jet engine, you know, ramping up. So let me just turn this on. Okay, now it's got one speed, 3450, and uh, anyway, it's, it's pretty good for some applications. That's buffing. There's probably a ton of stuff I left out, and there's probably a lot of you guys out there who do something better in terms of buffing. I'm not saying that I do everything um, the right way. It's my way. Um, might give you some ideas. I appreciate you watching, and uh, I'll talk to you next time.